ch 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 changes turn and face the strange changes I just want to be a different man time may change me but I can't trace time you know your cats can change food and I can show you I'm David Bowie. My little mojo tears, Jackson Galaxy, your ever-loving, singing his heart out cat daddy here today to talk to you about chicha changes What chicha changes do you think I'm talking about? I'm talking about food, which is what you guys are talking about. After our three-part series on dry food, wet food, and raw food, now we're talking about how do I switch that food, cat daddy. So today we'll be talking about whether we're talking about going from dry food to wet, dry food to raw, wet food to raw, same kind of techniques involved. Now, let's pause for a second and give you this newsflash. Newsflash is, I want to make sure that I'm saying this before I start talking, after I finish talking, and in the description below. This is something that you should initially consult your vet about. You should talk to your vet because each cat is an individual. I want to make sure that you're making these changes Chit -chit changes with your vet. So the first thing that I want to get out of the way is that whatever change we make here, dry to wet, wet to raw, dry to raw, you know, all of those. It should be a gradual change. You never want to just go bang, bang. One day you're eating this, now that's gone, you're eating this. Cats don't like rapid change of anything. And so you presenting that and then expecting them to just go for it and, and not stonewall you there for the first little bit is, you know, come on, you guys, you know cats by now. You know that that's not gonna work. You gotta stop free feeding your cats if you want to get anywhere with this change. They have to be hungry, number one. And number two, we want to get them into the ritual of meal times. If there's food available to your cats 24 seven, then why would they have to choose something that ordinarily they wouldn't? They won't, is the answer to that. Optimally, I would have you guys feed three meals a day. You can do four meals a day as well, but it gets them on a, a schedule. I'm hungry, I eat. I'm hungry, I eat. Meal times, no more free feeding. Do not pass go, do not stop at the diner. There we have it, okay, moving on. This is something that was always a given, um, and I think really over the past 10 years when there has been so much variety uh, that's come out in the marketplace that we've started talking about variety. It's not okay to feed our cats one food for their entire life. You know, it's if someone had said to you, uh, listen, I'm gonna give you this food pill here, and all you gotta do is eat this food pill, every day, three times a day, and you will live a normal, happy life, well, not happy, but, you know, lengthwise, you're gonna rebel a little bit because you like variety. Well, animals do too. They have variety in nature, so why wouldn't we replicate that? So when you get that change done, think about rotation. Think about, you know, every meal. Can I give them something a little bit different every day? I mean, it's not healthy for the gut not to ever be challenged in, in all of your years, but the other thing is, God forbid something happens to you and your cat winds up in the care of someone else or in a rescue or a shelter if they've only ever eaten one thing, dry, you know, blank, blank brand chicken, and you got people trying to figure out what else that cat will eat. Now the cat is stressed out, they're going to stop eating. So it's just something to think about ahead of time, just for their emotional, physical, and uh, behavioral well-being. So now, We've, we've laid the groundwork about how to change our cat's diet from one type of food to the other. Now it's into just basically some tips and tricks. We know that we're going to try to feed them nothing but meals. What I'm gonna assume is that if you're going from dry and you wanna get to raw, I would say transition from dry to wet first and then go wet to raw. That's just a more careful way of doing it and it's just trying to get your cat to, to go for that texture of meat, of wet. When it comes to dry food, one of the things that I would recommend is that you cut down the amount of dry food that goes into every meal. Cut it in half. Because what I would think is the best way to go is uh, you put the dry food down. They extinguish that food in no time flat because they're used to eating twice that much. Then they look up to you, what else you got for me? Now we're going to bring in the wet food. And we're just going to put it down and they're going to be like, huh, yeah, maybe or maybe they go for it, and if they don't go for it, that's fine. We pick up their meals after about 30, 45 minutes max. Meals come up, we don't let them graze for hours. And then when it's time for the next meal, again, we do the exact same thing again. Your cat's gonna be hungry, but the good thing is we know they ate something. Perhaps at that point, they're going to be more willing to try it. Bribery is okay, and I think in this case, bribing is just 
perfectly fine. So for instance, let's say that your cats are just dry food junkies. Sometimes what you might wanna try is you got the wet food, you ground up their dry food and or their junky treats into a dust and sprinkle that magic dust over the wet food. Mix it in with the wet food, just giving it a little bit of the smell that they're used to. That might be something you wanna try. Another thing that I'm really crazy about, especially for you know dry food addict cats, is the tube treats. If you've ever seen these treats, we, we sell them over at jacksongalaxy.com, a bunch of different varieties. They just open up the treat, which is a tube, and then you give it a gentle squeeze. And, and once you find that flavor that your cat goes for, and to be honest, I would say, a good portion of the cats that I've worked with find that one flavor they're into. So then you found that flavor they like, and now we got a texture that's different from dry. Now you take that entire tube treat out and you put it in a dish. It's a way to start the process going. Now we can transition over to food, and the bonus is you found a flavor they dug. There are so many brands out there of wet food. The market has just gotten full of different tastes, different textures, and when I say textures, I mean your cat might not go for a pate, but they might go for those sort of shreds, and if they don't go for the shreds, they may go for the mints, and if they don't go for that, they may go for the extra gravy, or you put a little bit of warm water in there and you turn it into gravy because they like to, to lap it up a little bit more. Are you gonna wind up wasting a little bit of food? Yes, you're going to do that. So try not to be frustrated with it. That's just something that's going to happen. We have to do a, a bit of experimenting to find out what your cat won't turn their nose up to. So another trick that we can use to get your cats into mealtime, ready for mealtime, and ready for something new in terms of the wet food is the thing that I talk about all the time, hunt, catch, kill. Hunt, catch, kill, eat. When do I not talk about playing with your cat? Never is the answer to that. I'm always talking to you about playing with your cat, playing interactively. Hunt, catch, kill. It's what cats are uniquely built to do. And what are they also built to do? Eat meat. So they're, they're built to hunt it, catch it, kill it, eat it. So what do we do? Before mealtimes, we get them excited about a little bit of play, a little bit of hunting an interactive toy, a little bit of getting down and dirty and grabbing it and biting it and doing whatever. Then we take that away, we present the meal. We are now speaking to the ancestor, to the raw cat. We're saying, here you go, this is what you're built to do in this world. Now you get to eat meat, and then they can go into it. So we get them excited, we get a little bit of exercise, burn off a few calories so they're ready to put a few more calories in. And that's something that, that I would tell you as you transition to meals, at least least one of those meals a day, get into the hunt, catch, kill, eat. You'll see a difference in your cats. I mean, and I'm not just talking about in terms of their willingness to eat, but I'm just talking about that vibrancy, that vitality, that thing that, that gives cats, what am I, when I do this, what am I talking about? Mwah, I'm talking about mojo, and this gives your cats mojo. I like going from dry to wet to raw, um, just because it's a little easier on the belly in terms of transitioning, and besides that, it's just, sometimes a lot to ask for, but let's say uh, you've made this transition and you're going from wet to raw or dry to raw, then the one piece of advice I would give you, first of all, we've got another uh, video that you might have seen last week on raw food, and you know now that there's commercially prepared uh, frozen raw diets that you can get really at this point most pet stores, which is miraculous. But if you're doing that, here's a, a, a little cheat, not a cheat, but sort of, that I've picked up over the years. Cats don't like cold food. They're hunters. So when you think about it, what are they going to be drawn to? Something that's about body temperature. So about 98 to 102 degrees, somewhere in that neighborhood. So whether you're taking uh, wet food, adding some uh, warm or hot water to it, and just letting that you know, become a little tiny bit of a stew, which is great also, by the way, because you're adding more hydration, which is always a good thing, or whether you're defrosting something that they're going to eat later. When it comes to the raw, I would say defrost it, throw it in a pan for all of like a minute. Uh, what you can do is just brown it a little bit, bringing it up to that 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 temperature, that body temperature. Now we're, we're working on something here that smells right to them. Now they get to explore a brand new texture. Maybe it's something I haven't really been around before. You can then take that, if they're not into eating it right off the plate at that moment, maybe you roll it up into, you know, little meatball looking things that looks like treats more. If it looks like something they've eaten before and maybe it smells vaguely like something they've eaten before, maybe they'll eat it again. One more little tip, because I'm always full of these tips. I have found that yes, there are bowls that we've talked about before that uh, avoid whisker stress, meaning that they're wider and a little flatter and cats don't have to really bury their faces in it. 
That affects some cats a lot and some cats a little. I have found a lot more success using plates, just flat plates uh, when it comes to especially the raw diet. And don't ask me why that works, it just works. That's what you're here for, these weird tips that I can't even explain, but it happened and maybe it'll happen for you as well. So let's talk about what you can expect to see in terms of changes in your cat's body. We've talked about before that when you go to a raw diet, you can expect to see a loss of fat and a retention of, of body mass in the form of muscle. Uh, so you might see some weight loss and that's okay. Again, you know, you have to be the judge of how much is too much, but a 1% uh, loss in body weight per week is a lot and, and we don't wanna see it that drastic. So you're watching to see how much your cat is consuming and making sure that it's enough for them. Uh, if you're at all hesitant, add another meal. Just, you know, make it a smaller meal. It's okay to have a snack meal along with regular size meals. It's okay to have four, even five meals a day. If you have the time to do it and you can make it into a ritualized thing, then that's all good. One more note I wanna give you about something to watch out for health-wise with your cat. It is okay for your cat to skip a meal. It is okay for your cat to eat a little bit at two meals. It's not okay for your cat to go more than let's say 12 hours max without eating anything. And that rule changes if your cat is obese or if your cat is a senior and we really need to keep every meal on them. But the thing that we're looking out for is something called fatty liver disease or hepatic lipidosis. And that is something that uh, at the very least is gonna be very costly when you get to the vet, but it can be fatal as well. So it's something that you wanna keep in close contact with. If your cat hasn't eaten for 10, 12, 14, 18, hours, it, it, that's not cool. Now we gotta back up and try something different. And it's okay to step back and start again because you, you're, you're worried about long-term fasting, which is just not okay for cats. All right, so there you have it. I don't wanna make this too complicated. I think the most complicating thing is your cat saying no and you giving up. That's the most complicated thing. Uh, persistence and patience on your part, I think is really the key that cracks the safe to your cat's belly. You owe it to your cats to try to get them into a better meal plan, you know? All right, I told you, I was gonna say this at the beginning of the video, the end of the video, and in the description. Please talk to your vet, have a healthy dialogue about the healthy life of your cats. Nutrition is a very big part of that. And I think that over time, it's just been sort of lacking in that dialogue uh, with vets, uh, maybe foods get recommended, uh, maybe general rules are said to you and you say okay and you go home, it's okay for you to advocate for your cat. If, if not you, who's gonna do it? And your vet should expect that and they should welcome that conversation, but I want you to have it. I don't want you to just watch this video and watch the other videos I, I made about dry, wet, and raw and just go. It's important to take inventory and to get a baseline of where your cat is right now, where you'd like them to get to, and it's just as important for your vet to be involved in that. But if your vet says something that you don't like or vice versa, that's what the Google is for. That's what the internet is for. You, you go to trusted resources, like some of the ones I'm gonna give you in the description. And that's all I'm saying is that I, I, I would love for it to be a dialogue between uh, the two of you who should together be your cat's best advocate. Well, that's it, guys. I hope this didn't seem overly complicated. Like I said, this is about uh, getting all the facts, getting some tips and tricks, and making sure that you guys are sticking to your guns when it comes to that change, being okay, spending a little bit of extra money at first, uh, throwing away some food that they just totally rejected. Maybe, you know, if you bought too much of it, you donate it to a rescue or a shelter who would be more than happy to have your donation of anything your, your cats won't eat because somebody will eat it and it's somebody who really needs to. And, and that's just the willingness will go a long way having that willingness and knowing that at the end of this yellow brick road is uh, is an emerald city where your cat will be living their best life and I can't say it enough times over nutrition is the, the key to that better longer life that is just about where I should leave this for the day. Uh, questions about nutrition, questions about what you should do next, that's what the comments are for. You know I read them, man. You know if you guys have been watching videos, I'm in there on the days that these videos come out for the most part, and I try to guide you through it, but I would definitely be welcome to more videos about, about this topic or any other for that matter. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscription and uh, ring that bell, you guys, new subscribers especially, ring that bell so that you know when the next video is coming out, and don't forget to spread the news, man. When it comes to stuff like this, nutritional health, spread it to everybody that you know who has a cat. Uh, let them say something like, you're crazy, I'm not gonna spend my money. Well, that's fine, but now you're armed with all the facts, aren't you? All right, you guys, until next time, all light and all love and all mojo to you.
Meow.